What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Oh man, I just dropped all my notes. That was a uh, pretty poor timing, but uh, good thing I'm not national news organization making some sort of blooper reel. All right, butterfingers. So thanks for joining me for this live stream. And I thought I would just make this because it's less about showing you a particular product and it's more about sharing some information that I recently discovered. And it starts with um, a story about me being in a rattlesnake country. Now, this was years ago. I am not a snake person. I don't know if you guys have ever stumbled on snakes in the wild. We don't have a lot of snakes here. Uh, the Massasauga rattler, I think, is the only thing that we have generally in the Midwest. Um, but the further south you go, particularly in the southwest, rattlesnakes, southeast. Andy, Dan, Chris, good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me up in here. Glad to have you. Um, wondered if you ever had uh, issues with snakes. I know some people like to have snakes as a pet, man. I just don't like snakes. I just don't understand how they're so... Uh, NFH, thanks for coughing into the elbow. Cough, cough. Protecting us all. And Rick wore boots out today. Very difficult to find boat deck soles. Uh, I guess I'm not surprised about that. You know, it's kind of funny. It's, I'm watching some of these YouTube channels that do like sole uh, refinishing. You know, cobblers, people who repair shoes aren't that common because this can be very expensive. But I suppose they could customize shoes. Uh, they have some interesting channels, though. But I mean, there are people who pay two or $3,000 to repair a pair of shoes because I'm assuming they're two or three thousand dollar pair of shoes. So, anyway, um, but this was years ago. I was out actually backpacking uh, with a Boy Scout troop, so I was a much younger lad. But we were out in New Mexico, and actually the Rangers had told us that there were a lot of snakes. It's not it's not snowing here, Andy, but it is cold as get out. But we were out hiking, and we were kind of in the low areas of this this uh, area, um, kind of tall grass, kind of prairie grass, really flat. And it was, um, you know, outside of the mountains and stuff that we hadn't gotten into yet. But they had just said that they had had a rattlesnake problem that whole summer. You know, not not a problem per se, but there were a lot of rattlesnakes. And in fact, what we learned is later that they were doing some rattlesnake, I don't, wouldn't call it extermination, but they were allowing people to go out and wrangle them, I guess, you know, hunt them, whatever it might be. But just in this one day, we came across six or seven of them. It was kind of crazy. Uh, in fact... You know, at, at one point, this big fat one was in the path and uh, was not moving and just did not care about us. And we we're taking photos. And um, there was another time when we actually had to cross a field of really tall grass. And man, you could just, you couldn't see them, but you could just hear rattles. And it was totally disconcerting. We tried to stay in the line and we we're kind of trying to make a lot of noise because you're trying to stomp the ground and scare them off when you can. Dan, thanks for joining me. And one of the things that I had been recently thinking about, and actually I was talking to uh, Joe Tedda about it, and if you saw my most recent video with him, he got uh, bit by a copperhead. And I was thinking about it, you know, I see photos on Instagram, you know, people that live in the Carolinas down south, I mean, uh, Arizona, wherever, you know, they come across snakes. And like I said, I always thought, man, getting bit is one of those things where I think it's just so fast. You don't see it, obviously. You're not trying to step up on a snake. If they feel cornered, they're just going to, but yeah, it's not a situation where if you don't see them and you're on them and they're about to strike that I think you can have the reaction time to move out of the way, right? So I thought about it and I thought, well, that's why people wore cowboy boots, right? This big leather, you know, I don't know what you call the top part here. High top. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking of Converse's. But obviously this, this huge leather construction here uh, is designed to protect you from snake bites, right? That's The cowboys learned that. That's why they invented cowboy boots. And it's great. This heavy-duty leather will protect you when you're out in the prairie, the frontier, on the ranch, in the mountains, wherever. But I learned that's not the case. That is not why cowboy boots are designed like this. Because I thought, well... You know, if I'm ever going to go out again like that, you know, get myself a pair of cowboy boots and be protected from snakes. And that's not why uh, they, they do not advertise that cowboy boots are snake uh, protective, protective gear. And in fact, there is a distinct reason why these cowboy boots are designed this way. And so I actually found that out. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, well, 
that's a long list, right, of snakes that are poisonous. A much longer list than I would have around here, Chris. Um, and J. Joseph, Thomas, big boo. Yeah. Glad you could all join me here. So I did, a, I did a little research. I thought this was fascinating. I just thought I would share this with you. Um, so, again, I'm not the only one. And, in fact, in my quest to understand this, and if cowboy boots are, you know, snake-proof, there are a lot of articles written on it, and, and they're not. Now, I will say that there seems to be some consensus here that most people who are wearing cowboy boots have this cowboy boot and then have denim jeans that come down here. And if you have a layer of denim and a decently robust layer of leather between you and your shin and the snake, that that is better protection than certainly having nothing or certainly just having... Uh, denim on top of your skin right or a long sock or something like that that you know the quick piercing of those fangs um you know the quick bite the striking action there might be not be enough to get the fangs through and even if it does maybe it's not uh you know maybe it's strong enough to prevent the fangs from piercing the skin right i mean um and sometimes snakes don't even uh deploy the venom the mature snakes sometimes they hold that back because it can apparently kind of drain them of the energy um they kind of go a little comatose afterwards so sometimes they're just doing the bite to scare you off um but either way it's going to save you from maybe an injury or the venom or whatever it is so it's certainly better than nothing i would certainly rather have boots on protecting some of my shin than just tennis shoes now this does not go up to the knee i I think some are taller than others, but when I've seen uh, cowboy boots with the pants rolled up, which is the only way I like looking at them, hey, Christine, how are you? Then I've noticed that the, the, the top of the cowboy boot only, you know, comes kind of comes up midway through the shin. So what is one to do? Well, if you want, if you want snake protection, this is not what this is about, but actually, a while ago, not recently, I picked up these. These are snake gators. And they are <laughs> kind of reminds me of shin protectors that I wore when playing soccer as a kid. But they actually have this little lip that goes down here, kind of covers the top of your foot. And they go up, they have kind of these knee covers. So they cover quite a bit. You know, they're pretty big and they're pretty heavy. So we've got this kind of hard um, nylon on the outside. And then I think some sort of like plastic inserts here. So I think that I, I was looking forward to reviewing those. So I've got some rattlesnakes on order. I'm just going to release them in my house and just wear them around and see if I get bitten to death. So we'll review those at some point. But if you really want snake protection, you're going out somewhere where you're really worried about getting bit. You know, there can be a number of places then get, get full on snake gators. But the reason that cowboy boots are designed this way uh, was kind of fascinating to me. It was something that I hadn't actually thought about. And that what you'll notice on the cowboy boot, and if you've never worn them, I've only worn a pair once to try them on. They weren't mine. It was uh, a guy I um, was hanging out with in Fort Worth, Texas, and he just let me put them on. You just, they're kind of like a snow boot. You kind of just angle your toe down, get in there, uh, get all the way in, and then just the totality of how much surface area there is kind of holds the boot on. Um, they're actually not super easy to get on or off. They're not that, they're not hard, I wouldn't say either. It's, presuming you have the right size and you're sure you're going to break them in, but they kind of slide in, you know, you, you kind of slide them off. You kind of wiggle your toe and you can kind of get them off. Right. But the reason they are designed like that, I found out is for this. And it makes sense to me. And what I guess um, cowboys were aware of is that you can fall off your horse. It bucks you, get scared. You're not paying attention, whatever it might be. You hit a branch on a tree, you knocks you off and your shoe or your boot, your foot, gets stuck in the stirrup. And you are getting dragged by your horse. Now, in a case where you have a shoe with laces or something like that, and your shoe is stuck inside that stirrup, you're just going to get dragged to death or trampled under those back legs or dragged over rocks or whatever it might be because you don't have anything to control the horse. You don't have your reins. You can't get them to stop. And that is not a very enjoyable way to go, man. Um, you want to end that as quickly as possible. And so what I learned is that cowboy boots are designed like this so that you can basically shake off the boot in an emergency. So if that boot gets stuck in that stirrup, you can wriggle your foot out and then get back up and the horse probably still going to run around. Hopefully it'll stop. You aren't being dragged that whole way. And so the design of the cowboy boot is for 
uh, protecting you when you fall off your horse. It is not for protecting you from critters. Now, I think, like I said, a byproduct of that is that snake bite, bug bite, getting hit in the shin with a a rock or a log or something like that is probably going to be a little bit muted as opposed to no protection at all. But it is not for protecting you from snakes, which is what I thought it was. So I learned something as I was researching that. And like I said, if you really want that protection, snake gators, I'm sure that if you get a custom pair of boots made, you can ask for some really thick leather up front. Hopefully that does not... Uh, make it harder to get on and off and negate the point of a cowboy boot, but that's it. Uh, J. Joseph Towns, want to check in the boots for spiders? Yes, absolutely. You know, this is totally aside. Thanks for bringing that up. But I don't remember, I don't know if you remember the show uh, John and Kate Plus Eight, um, the Goslins, right? Raising those kids. Did, did you guys, do you guys remember that show? And then Kate Goslin, John Goslin and Kate Goslin didn't have the greatest marriage. They split up bitter custody battles still going on and all that stuff. But I actually remember we were out there and they told us when you use an outhouse, you take a stick first and you run it on the inside of the seat and you throw the stick down the outhouse uh, or the, the toilet hole itself because brown recluse spiders will kind of uh, create like homes underneath outhouse seats. And you don't want to get by a brown recluse because... While it's not advertised to be lethal, they can be very bad for you, right? Um, they, they can be devastating, in fact, you know, cause you to lose that area of your skin and all those other things. And especially when we were out camping and backpacking, you know, you weren't going to be near medical attention. Now, I've always kind of remembered that, did that thing. Luckily, didn't have brown recluse spiders, but they said, look in your boots, look in your sleeping bag. Just, you know, if you see any spider, get rid of it. Don't make uh, any assumptions about it. But the reason I bring up John and Kate plus eight is I just saw, I think just this last month, John Goslin, I think he lives out in uh, North Carolina somewhere, maybe out in, uh, I think in a more rural area. And I saw he got bitten. Uh, there was a brown recluse spider. And, and this is just me reading whatever news rags uh, that were talking about it. A brown recluse spider that had uh, crawled into his bed sheets. He didn't see it. And he woke up excruciating pain and his leg had swollen to twice its normal size and he was hospitalized for a while because of that spider so yes check your boots for spiders as well so like out in the prairie out in the frontier oh, something's always trying to kill you so anyway just wanted to share that about cowboy boots it wasn't really a review it was just something that you know i was looking for ways to protect yourself when you're out in god's country and uh, came across that information so i thought it was worth sharing um how's the weather here it is currently i think nine degrees it's not snowing it hasn't snowed in a while but basically all the snow has had a little bit of like a glaze of freezing rain on it so it is very flat very slippery the snow is very crunchy uh there isn't a lot of it but it is very very cold out here very cold um uh, j joseph thomas says should you condition new boots with mink oil first that's um you know it's a good question <laughs> you know i'm a i'm a novice to this you know like i said i just uh i, I i'm kind of a, a city guy that kind of learns about some of these old tech and fashions and i would say that uh maybe some people can weigh in here but i've heard that mink oil is great for conditioning all sorts of leathers in fact uh from i don't know baseball gloves to wallets to all sorts of stuff. I've heard mink oil is great. And actually, I've heard mink oil is harder and harder to find these days. Uh, there's lots of leather conditioner. But I would say that my guess is that if I were to get a pair of cowboy boots, you know, you've got all this leather. You've got kind of a pretty high heel on it and a pretty stiff sole. You know, I, I feel like when I've heard people walking in cowboy boots, they're very clunky. And I would think that just with all that leather, you would want to condition it a lot as you're breaking it in because you want it to move with you. You don't want to get blisters or hot spots on it. Um, probably wearing them a lot every day in different weather conditions is probably going to help with that. But I would think that an oil that's not going to destroy it, but condition it and make it a little more weatherproof and water resistant and all that stuff is probably the smart way to go. So Jay Joseph, I think you're on the right track with it, but I'm not sure for sure. Did I watch the new Spider-Man? Uh, no, I have not seen the new Spider-Man. Um, in fact, I kind of wanted to see it, but in, there are at least two other movies that I would prefer to see, you know? So I, I actually really wanted to see the new Ghostbusters Afterlife movie. And 
you know, almost, almost went out to see that just recently. And I also wanted to see the new Matrix uh, Revelation, Resurrection. I don't remember what it is, but I enjoyed the first Matrix movies. It's been a long time. I almost feel like uh, I want to see that movie, but I almost feel like I need to watch at least the third one before I go out and see this new Matrix movie because I don't really remember how it ended. I kind of remember he got out of the Matrix and free people and sacrificed himself and all that stuff. So I also feel like I need to do a little bit of refresher before I go out and see those movies. Um, huge northern front, temperatures dropped to 58. Temperature dropped to 58 out there. Well, that's sweater weather for um, my southern friends. More of a sneaker fanatic, Andy? I agree. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm all about comfort, and in most cases... You know, it's just, that's all I need. When you're just living the normal suburban life, sneakers are great. In fact, um, Rat was talking about deck shoes. I actually love boat shoes. You know, those light canvas shoes, nice grippy rubber sole on them. Just everyday shoes. They don't, they're not heavy. And, you know, I don't slide on the ice as much as I would on with some of my other shoes. And, you know, they're easy to slip on and slip off and they, they look good and they're casual and they're not too formal, not too casual, I feel like. Chessie Alleycat. Uh, thoughts on the Tesla Tunnel and all the traffic congestion it's had lately? It's kind of interesting. Uh, what do they call it? The Boring Company or something like that? Is that, uh, is that what you're talking about, uh, Chessie? It's it's interesting. You know, it's one of those things where I'm uh, Elon Musk's stock to me has been rising over the last few years. I think he's got some interesting ideas and uh, I'm starting to be, become a bigger fan of him. The problem with digging tunnels, and I get that you're kind of moving this level to a, a level that we're not, you know, um, currently using, you know, you can't just elevate roads because we have buildings and all sorts of stuff. So going underground makes some sense, but when things go bad, man, what happens? I mean, it's even like driving in big tunnels. If you've ever been to Boston, they have the big dig. Most of the highways are underground in the city area. You know, when things go bad, you need, one, a lot of ventilation because you have car exhaust, you have carbon dioxide, whatever it might be. Uh, you don't have lights. So let's say there's a power outage or a flash flood or something like that. One, boom, it's dark. Uh, secondly, how do you get out, right? And when there is congestion, especially the way they have it right now, it's only a single file line for cars. Man, Everything kind of becomes frozen in place, is, is what I thought. Mink oil is an excellent leather softener and conditioner. Yeah, I've heard the two. You know, I've, I don't think I've ever read, uh, I don't think I've ever had mink oil. I've had some other leather conditioners, but like I said, I think mink oil is harder to get. And I don't know why. And maybe it's not friendly to the mink or something like that. I'm not sure. But um, I know that in the past, even like watch bands and things like this, you know, they've um, encouraged you to use mink oil with them. The Matrix is on HBO Max if you have it. Well, um, that's awesome, Chris. I might have to check that out. I, I I really wanted to see it, but I just, I feel like I said, I, I got to rewatch that last Matrix movie again. Jay Joseph says, Peter, your thoughts on Fiat autos? You owned a 500 for some time, a good commuter car. How about the Abarth variant? Yes. Um, I know some people have mixed feelings about it. I never really had any major problems uh, with my Fiat. It was great. It was reliable. Yes, I had some things. I had some small repairs. I don't even remember off the hand offhand what they were at the time, but they weren't major. They weren't powertrain issues or anything like that. I think the hood prop rod broke once on it. Uh, the clip that holds the bottom end in broke, and so it's like a $10 plastic piece that had to be fixed. So I really liked it, and I loved how small it was, how easy it was to drive, how easy it was to park. It was a perfect commuter car, and it, it's not super powerful, but even in the suburbs, it's not like I lived in the city where you're just stop and go, max speed is 30 miles an hour. No, I could drive it on the highway. There was some wobble to it sometimes in high winds, and it was had a lot of road noise and things like that, but it, it, I, it wasn't underpowered. Like driving here in the suburbs, it always kept up with traffic, and I had the lowest end. You know, In fact, the Abar, I think, is a is probably a true sports car in the, the, the same way that maybe like the Mazda Miata is and whatever the higher end one is, you know, it had the power to be very sporty to me. Um, the problem with it was it was a manual transmission, which I can drive a manual transmission, but I don't want to drive a manual as my commuter car. So the one I really thought was kind of the perfect balance was the turbo. It was called the Fiat 500 turbo and it had a turbo. It wasn't as powerful as the Albarth. It was slightly less powerful, but it could be had with an automatic transmission. And so I think that would give you some performance and more fun and yet be an everyday car that you could live with, if that makes sense. Now I will say this video wasn't about it. I just saw that the Fiat 500 X, which is their SUV, their kind of sport activity vehicle has a, 
like a yacht club edition or something like that either coming out or available or something and, and man i saw the pictures of it i actually like the fiat 500x design it's kind of got the the round headlights so it's it's kind of friendly and not sporty but it has that kind of fast back uh design on the back so it has that sloping back so it's less minivan and more more squished porsche cayenne ish so I actually like the design, but I really like this Yacht Club edition or whatever. I, I'm not getting that right. I, maybe it is called the Yacht Club edition, but you know it had like nicer stitching to the seats, and you know it kind of looked a little more upscale. The dashboard wasn't really that different, but it just it it looked cool in the fact that you know the Fiats are value cars for the most part. But I like that it had this little air of some Italian luxury to it in an affordable way. Now, the only problem with it is it had a retractable cloth top to the to the, to the the Fiat 500X, which is fine. And especially if you live in a warm climate, you'll probably like that. But I think in the winter, 99% of the year, that sucker would be closed. So I just don't need it. I don't even need sunroofs, to be honest. Um, sounds like a blockbuster horror movie, Boring Tunnel Flood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, hey, they made Sharknado 1, 2, 3, and 4. So why couldn't they make Boring Tunnel Flood? I'd make it. You bring in tens of tens of dollars. Alan T, how you doing? Thanks for joining me here. And Kara Hernandez, uh, I am so glad that you are joined here. Fiat 850 Spider Convertible. We're called construction of three cars of our own. You know, that may be. And I feel like that car now is a classic and the prices are kind of outrageous. So uh, despite the fact that it might have been like Corvair-like and that it was falling apart, I mean, even the Corvairs now are collectible classes, which is great. Crazy. I mean, it's great, but it's crazy to me. Chris, great school teacher. Yeah, you know, never try. Don't know what it's like to be a school teacher. So, I mean, I guess I do. I know many school teachers, but um, no, I, hopefully that's it. I just wanted to share that with you. What I learned about cowboy boots in my quest to find other products to share with you. And uh, now I kind of want to own a pair of cowboy boots, but I also want to own a car uh, pair of cowboy boots with carbon fiber or Kevlar inserts. So that they're ballistic and snake tactical. So, Jay Joseph, let me know if you have any questions on Fiat's. You know, I don't know. That Fiat 500X Yacht Edition, I don't know if I can find a link to it. But you'll have to take a look at it and see what you think. But if I can find a link to it, I'll put it in the description. But kind of made me think, you know, maybe a nice small little crossover would be exactly what the doctor ordered. I don't know. I'll check it out. But... Thank you for joining me on this evening. Just wanted to share my discovery, which you may say, oh, dude, I knew that. Everyone knew that. You don't even have to be a cowboy to know that. But I just learned it. So that's it. Have a good night. Peter Von Panda, out. We can stop more and explore so much deeper.